What's up, y'all? Thanks for checking in with Callie. If you haven't, please like, subscribe. So, the Clippers really just wiped the floor with the Boston Celtics. I mean, I feel like they showed the NBA world how dangerous they really could be. And I feel like not only that, they showed them how effective they can be in all areas because not only they got, you know, 26 points out of, you know, Kawhi Leonard, the best player on the team, and he definitely played up to that level. He definitely took on the challenge. They did it off a back-to-back. Um, they played the night before in Toronto, and a lot of people went into, going into that game, a lot of people probably thought, you know, the Clippers might not be as sharp, you know, coming off a back-to-back like that. But um, pretty much, you know, Kawhi and PG didn't really play much of the fourth quarter, pretty much either game. And, this game here in that third quarter, the, the the Clippers really, you know, put their foot down even more. I mean, the Celtics, you know, they played decent, you know, f- uh, for a stretch here and there. But the Clippers defense really stifled them. And, you know, Kawhi's defense is always in the forefront because he always makes like these big transitional like type plays to where it's, it, it, it causes and it turns into like fast break points for them. More so for himself because he goes after, the, you know, the, the steal and then he dunks it and then it gets everybody else going. Terrence Mann done the same thing. The way they were rotating back and forth between the law firm, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they really put a hurting on them. Jason Tatum only had 21 points. Kawhi was the best player on the floor with 26 points, seven rebounds, two steals, two two blocks. Um, and really, you know, when you look at when I say totality, you know, you got Paul George. He was being very efficient. You know, the shots that he had wide open, he took them. They were high percentage shots. He didn't force anything. He only had like uh, 17 points, but still, that's that's efficiency. That's what they need. They need that from Paul George. I mean, if they're going to go far, because Paul George is a big part of what they do. It can't just be Kawhi and him doing his thing, and then Paul. George George don't do his. I mean, that was the that was the problem with them years ago in the bubble. Kawhi was hooping up until that game seven, but you know, uh, Paul George is kind of like flailing that whole series pretty much against the uh, Denver Nuggets, and you can't have that if you you want to win. So efficiency from Paul George and you know taking high percentage shots more than anything is really going to be key for him to help this team get past the hump as well, along with you know Kawhi being efficient as he always is, and you know James Harden. He didn't play well in regards to scoring. He was like 0 for 6 from the three-point line, but he was like a plus 36 in the plus minus category, which means he was getting other people in their spots and him being on the floor, finding people in areas where they where they like it, as he usually does at a high percentage, at a high rate, made him a plus 36, which he was the highest out of everybody and he scored the least you see what i'm saying russ only had like four points but russ came in and gave energy as always and then you look at what really makes them well-rounded in a lot of ways daniel tice he came out with an 18 point game knocked down like two three pointers you know some big shots to keep the uh the momentum uh on the Clippers side i mean it was really a, a onslaught really and they really displayed how they really would just dis- how they really can dismantle a team if they really put it all together i mean honestly like you know uh, to for Drew Holiday, Derek White, I mean Jalen Brown, I mean they they had all of them locked up. I mean it really was nothing they could do. And then you know what a lot of people don't look at with the Clippers now that Terrence Mann is shooting a lot better with more confidence from the arc and the three point range. And the perimeter is making him play even more energetic on defense than even what he usually does. And like I said, when you could rotate between him, Kawhi, and Paul George on the opposing team's best players and go back and forth and still, you know, get contributions defensively from other guys, you know, like a James Harden, like a Ru- Russell Westbrook who will come out there and play with that type of energy, you know what I'm saying? It, it really just makes them a tough team all around to beat. Now, of course, people going to say that the Celtics didn't have um, Porzingis, but I mean, the Clippers didn't have Zubak. So, I mean, like, Porzingis is a, a, a somebody that, that kind of completes the, the Celtics a little bit more. Well, you could say Zubak, you know, completes the Clippers because he's in the starting lineup. He is a starting, he's a starter for the Clippers. So, he's that piece, he's that anchor in the paint where he'll get a block shot here and there, where he'll get extra rebounds. And, you know, he can actually, you can throw the ball into Zubak and he can score on his own at times. So, I mean, it's like, that's a, that, that's a huge part of what the Clippers have or what the Clippers do as well, which is Zubak. So, I mean, them missing him is a key key component but the Clippers are well-rounded because when you look at Mason Plumley, somebody like him he had eight points seven rebounds a block or two and he had like four or five I think offensive rebounds I'm not sure but that's what I'm saying you look at that and then Daniel Tice he can stretch the floor shoot from the perimeter and 
He can go in the paint, you know, score a little bit if need be. It's not really his strong suit, but I mean, he'll get rebounds. He'll bang in there and he's a tough guy. You know what I'm saying? So when you have that, that kind of makes up a Zubac, you know, and what he does. But you still have two other big men who can kind of do other things he can't do. So it's like, you know, the well balanced there in the big man category is huge for the Clippers. And then, like I said, when Kawhi is on or PG is on or Harden or, you know, Russ or hell, if all of them be on for happen to be on for some reason, you really got a problem. You're definitely not going to beat them. So it's like, you know, they have a lot to come at you with. And then you can't forget about players like Norman Powell coming off the bench who can come in there and drop like 20 plus points anytime he wants to. So, I mean, that that's another uh, situation there that you got to be concerned about. And if they hypothetically decide to use Bones Highland or somebody like that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he can go in there and have a big game. He just has that type of, you know, energy about him as well. So, the the well roundedness of the Clippers really affects a lot of teams' game plan playing against them, and I feel like it affected the the Celtics so much because Jason Tatum was able to get off a little bit. But there were times where, you know, Kawhi, you know, crowded him to where he couldn't do certain things and he had to make adjustments in midair, things like that, in which, you know, Tatum can do that. But, you know, Kawhi guarding you, it just makes things a little bit more difficult. There's times where I've watched Celtics games where Tatum would get to the paint and kind of like, you know, look like he's about to score and go at somebody, but then he'll kick it out or try to make a, um, you know, a, a maybe like a behind the back pass or something like that to somebody that's trailing him. Whereas when you when you're playing against Kawhi Leonard, it, it a lot of that changes because Kawhi alters a lot of things that uh, offense is trying to do just by himself. And then when you have Paul George out there, another uh, great wingman like that, you know, that really makes them tough to really beat. You know what I'm saying? So now that you added James Harden, somebody who can get the ball wherever they like it in their spots where they're scoring at a more of a high, higher clip, being more have more opportunities to be more efficient, even though Kawhi is always efficient, it, it really makes them hard to stop offensively and defensively. They got two guys on there along with Terrence Mann man who will get after you and like be a ball hawk all night long so it's like you know what they did to the Celtics it wouldn't have been much different even if Porzingis was there I mean they might have won by eight eight or nine points I guess if Porzingis maybe 10 points if Porzingis was there maybe not by like 20 or something like that or they wouldn't have been up by 36 points with Porzingis there they might have been up by like 21 points with Porzingis being there so I mean either way I don't think Porzingis would have made that much of a difference it just shows how good or how elite this team is and Boston has the best record in the league 35 and 10 maybe 35 and 11 now and um, the, the the Clippers really, really uh, put their foot down on them because I think the Boston Celtics beat the Clippers several weeks ago um, without Kawhi Leonard when Kawhi was out for that four-game stretch that he was. So, I mean, when you look at that, you know, the Clippers really wanted to go out there and make a statement, and they damn well did. They went out there and stifled that team and made that team look like amateurs. They really did. And, you know, people can say what they want to say, and a lot of people are not going to give the Clippers credit, but it just goes to show how deadly they are. And like I said, when you got four or five guys in the starting lineup with a plus 25 and more, I mean, in the plus minus category, whether they're scoring high or whether they're not scoring as well, it shows how good or how elite this team is. It really does. So it's like, you know, a lot of people could say what they want, but you got to give the Clippers credit. I mean, what Ty Lewis figured out with this team and how he's put everything in place with this team, they are really dangerous. And like I said, the only problem that they've ever had was health. Because even without James Harden, they probably could at least made it to a finals if they were healthy. You know what I'm saying? With James Harden and the addition of Russell Westbrook, if they're, if they, if they're there, along with Kawhi and PG, if they're all healthy, they're going to be a really tough out. And I personally just don't see nobody that can really stop what they have. I mean, because in a seven-game series, they don't even have to make that many adjustments. They got guys that can go out there and drop 30, 40 any given night. So the adjustments is what they already have, which is the big four. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, and then anybody else on the team that additionally adds to what the big four is doing, which is the other guys, well, I mean, that makes them even tougher. So, I mean, Wow, I mean, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think the Clippers would be up by 36 points off a of back to back, but they really just showed everybody it it does not matter. You know, the NBA is ours. We're the best team in the NBA, regardless of the record. We're one game out of the best in the West, and there was still more games to go. And um, just just yeah, I mean, hey, call it what you want, but um, the Clippers they definitely look next up. 